welcome to the White Glove Demo of the Settlers of Catan. I'm excited too, Glover. This is the big time. Sure is a lot better than your starting job in video, huh? Even grass and coffee stains come right out. Wash your clothes normally and just look at the results. Cut! Get it together, boy. The Settlers of Catan is the gateway to the family of Catan games. All of the Catan expansions and extensions use this game as the starting point. This is the island of Catan. The island is made up of 19 hexagonal pieces that are randomly placed out into the board frame. Every game board is different. There are five land types on the island, and each land produces a different resource. Clay pits produce bricks, mountains produce ore, fields produce grain, pasture produces sheep, and forests produce wood. There is also a desert hex which produces nothing. The robber starts the game here. Each land hex gets a number chip. The number represents a possible roll on two six-sided dice. Whenever the dice are rolled, anyone with buildings next to the land hexes with that number will receive the resources the land produces. You will start the game with two settlements on the board. This means you start with two victory points towards the ten you need to win. The game uses what's called a switchback start. The starting player will place one of his buildings on an intersection of two or three hexes. You will also place a road with this settlement. The next player clockwise will then place a settlement, and so on until the last player places their first settlement. Now, the last player places their second settlement and road, and takes the resources for all of the lands that the second building touches. Each player in counterclockwise order places their second settlement and takes their starting resources. The starting player will place their second settlement last and then takes the first turn of the game. Rolling the dice is the first thing you will do each turn. If, for example, a 5 was rolled, the red player would receive brick and the blue player would receive ore. After resources are handed out, you may then trade resources and buy roads, buildings, or development cards. All of these are shown on your player summary card. It's likely that you won't get everything you want through production, so you can trade with other players. If you have extra sheep, you could trade with another player for their grain. There are four things that you can buy with resources. You may buy as many of anything as you have resources for. Roads cost you a wood and a brick. They may be placed on any hex side that touches one of your settlements or one of your roads. Roads are important because they let you spread out and build more buildings on the board. Settlements cost one brick, one wood, one grain, and one sheep. They may be placed on any intersection that you can reach by road. There's one other important rule. No settlement may be built within one hex side of any other building on the board, yours or an opponent's. Each settlement you build gives you another victory point and lets you produce more resources. A city is an upgrade to a settlement. By paying two grain and three ore, you may replace one of your settlements on the board with a city. Cities are worth two victory points and produce two resource cards instead of just one. Development cards cost one ore, one sheep, and one grain each. These are cards that will give you some special benefit. Usually, you may only play one development card per turn and not on the turn that you buy the card. There are five victory point cards in the deck. These stay hidden until you have enough points to win the game with them. These are the exception to the one per turn rule. You can play as many of these as you want to win, even if you bought them on the same turn. There are three special cards, 
Year of Plenty, which gives you two resources of your choice, Road Building, which lets you build two free roads, and Monopoly, which lets you steal all of the resource cards of one type from all players. Most of the development cards are night cards. And to talk about these, we need to talk about what happens when a 7 is rolled. There are no land hexes with a 7. When a 7 is rolled, three things will happen. First, everyone checks to see how many resource cards they have. If you have more than 7 cards in your hand, discard half of your cards of your choice, rounding down. The player that rolled the seven now moves the robber to any other land hex. If the robber is standing on a hex, that land does not produce resources. Finally, the player who moved the robber may steal a random resource card from one player with a building touching the robber's hex. Then, that player continues with the trading and building part of his turn. The knight cards in the development deck let you move the robber and steal a card. This is the only card you can play before you roll the dice. Knight cards have another purpose. If you are the first person to play three knights, you get the largest army card. This is worth two victory points. If another player ever has more knights than you, you must give them the largest army card. You also earn two victory points if you have the longest road. The first player with a single five-segment road gets the longest road award, and another player with a longer road can later take it away. Finally, there are harbors on the outside of the board. If players will not trade with you, you can trade with the bank, but it's expensive. Normally, you must trade four of the same resource to the bank in order to get one card of another resource. Building a settlement or a city on a harbor space improves your trading terms with the bank. A three-to-one port lets you trade three of something to the bank for one of something else. A two-to-one port lets you trade two of the resource shown for one of another resource. If you have 10 victory points on your turn, including buildings, awards, and victory point cards, you win. And that's how to play The Settlers of Catan. It's an award-winning game that you'll find interesting and exciting every time you play. Sorry, Glover really doesn't like the robber.